Hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, Bob. Thank you all for joining today. Okay, I'm gonna paint a new portrait. I found uh, this beautiful picture on Pixels. Pixels is a, a free copyrighted website. Okay, that's the link on the description box. I'm gonna mention the colors. <clears throat> I have here titanium white, uh, yellow chrome, cadmium orange, cadmium red. Uh, this is uh, kinocridon rose. Okay, this is raw umber, cobalt blue, and black. Okay, uh, you know I painted uh, last week. I painted. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I pick up a picture that kind of similar to this one with, uh, you know, uh, let's say it was just like a chiaroscuro image. This is more, it has some more light, but I just want to get something closer to the previous one. Uh, I, got, I got it here. Let me show you. Or I think I have it here. Yeah, this one. Okay. I like it. I want to get something like this. On today's painting and for that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna change the contrast a, a lot you know I'm gonna make everything like pretty dark okay first I gotta start with a sketch for sketching I'm gonna use raw umber and I just this brush this is a number zero it's a filler brush I'm gonna start sketching first uh, that's gonna be about this is going to be about simplification, okay, I'm squinting and I'm trying to find any simple geometrical shape. I always do the same, you know, I see for example here that I can place the whole figure in, inside this just flat simple shape. Now I can just skip, split this in two for placing the whole head here. And for the arms, you know, what it looks just like a couple of rectangular shapes. And for the hand, another rectangular shape, which is a little bit higher than this one. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, what I gotta see is uh, the placement of, you know, the face and the arm. On my canvas, if I gotta move it, maybe a bit to the left, to the right. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking that I should move this a bit to the left because it's kind of getting too close to my palette. Yeah. Mm, okay, I'm gonna just draw here this little box around here and let's say the painting is gonna just end up here oh that leaves me to just not too much space for mixing my colors if I move it uh, you know I think I'm gonna keep it like that I got more canvas here than you will see uh, I got more space to paint on top and to the left I list at uh, I have I, at least an inch to my left I could move the figure to my left but I think that's okay I just prefer it kind of you know maybe uh, move or paint even all this area at the end since it's gonna be everything dark I think that's gonna be okay oh uh, uh, hello hello at sunny side hello Michael hello Janus Hello Fati, hello Sylvia, hello George. Okay. Okay, I got this simple shape. Now it's gonna be about measuring. Okay, one measure that I know every time that I draw a face that the eyes are halfway from the top of the head to the bottom but since uh, I'm not drawing an adult, adult this change a bit, okay? if 
the measure is from here to from here, here. In this case, I'm gonna move the eye a little bit down. Okay. On top of this line, I'm gonna place the eyebrow. Okay. Now from the eyebrow, I'm gonna measure to the nose, and from the nose, I'm gonna repeat this to the chin. Okay, let me check out the photograph. Mm, yeah, I think I can use that. Maybe move after getting this, you know, this drawing just in just regular proportions. I'm gonna start just moving things a bit. Maybe the nose is gonna be a little bit longer, shorter. Okay, I don't know yet. I have to compare. I need something on my canvas and then. I'm gonna be able to compare and see what I have to move and how much I gotta move something, anything. Okay. As you see, it's something pretty simple. Obviously, I'm not so sure about the exact position of the, the eyes, nose and mouth. But if I measure, okay, I think the proportions are good. I'm not saying that these proportions fit the model's face. But from here, I'm saying that I'm going to move, maybe make the nose a bit, a bit shorter. Okay. Now, for the arm, okay, it's just like a rectangular shape. I'm squinting and... As the same way that we draw the face, let's say here, you know, the profile, that would be a positive space. We need to check out a negative space. A negative space that would be, for example, this area. Okay? What's the shape here? What shape do you see? I see something like a triangle. Eh? I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And what about here? Here it's more difficult because the value change, but in this portion it looks pretty clear that it looks like a triangular shape. You know, I see we see the hair and we see this dark area here. Now the same for example here. Below the arm, we see again another negative space. Okay, a negative shape. And that's pretty useful when we draw. Okay. Now, this is for the drawing. One more thing that we can do is just uh, pick up a brush, a pencil, or a proportional divider, I think is pretty nice, and measure the high and the width. Compare. Okay? Both. That's pretty useful. I used to do that all the time, but for me it was more measuring holding my pencil and doing this. Or sometimes I did that, this, I repeat the distance from here to here to check out, okay? Measuring is something that we keep doing all the time. It doesn't matter how many years you paint. It doesn't matter how much experience you, you gained over the years. Measuring is a must, always. Uh, let's see the top of the, the box here. Okay, to draw this, I'm checking again a negative shape. I'm squinting. Okay, now I see, uh, you know, I see the, the, uh, the, the, sheet here and it's pretty nice uh, you know I'm just thinking that it could be pretty nice to paint just this uh, just white and add some color vari variations here yeah yeah but I got that idea you know about painting all this dark that means that maybe I'm, I'm not gonna see anything of this of the, the, the sheet and maybe I'm not gonna see anything here. Everything's gonna be too dark. Not here. 
Okay, I'm gonna use a mirror. I need to check out. Uh, sometimes I can just use my cell phone. It looks like the head is a kind of a bit smaller on my drawing. Mm, anyway. Just comparing. Yeah, I think I should move the, the maybe the, the, the chain a little bit down and maybe the top of the head a little bit up. Or just maybe just uh, thin the arm. Okay. Mm, okay, yeah, definitely something something's not okay with the size of the head, but I'm gonna continue painting and as I paint I'm gonna make some corrections. Okay, uh, one thing, I'm squinting again and I wanna draw here the edge of the shadow here on the face. Okay, I'll separate that here too. I see some light, light. Okay, now I got the drawing. Since I'm not gonna copy. <coughs> the colors and uh, either the contrast I want to establish right now I mean my color and values okay yeah, now there's a lot of light here on the face I'm gonna use just come in or orange I'm gonna paint here the light on the face not too much paint okay the light is coming from this little box that means that it spreads all over here on the face the shoulder, the arm, and I don't see like a lot of light here on the photograph, like you know this light hitting the arm, but I'm gonna add a little bit of this light here. Okay, what else? The hair here. Here too, the hair. Okay, next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint uh, all the arm, the shadow here, all the shadow here, the hair, and the face. Just like I'm seeing just one flat and solid value here. It's just simplification, okay? The same way I simplify when I draw. I do the same when I paint and I prefer group all the values okay and from there I'm gonna start adding uh, some uh, more variations more color more values but first I gotta I gotta just separate you know my lights my midtones and shadows okay now let's see uh, for that, I'm gonna pick up some. I, I see, you know, we will see in the photograph, it looks like a, some violish, violet, no, kind of, yeah, just yes, violet, yeah. Okay. Mm, okay, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna just, just raw umber, a touch of white, a touch of kinacridon rose, a bit of linseed oil. Because right now I'm not so sure about uh, about matching this color because I'm gonna change okay everything. This color that I see on the photograph works pretty good as a shadow because everything around is lighter. Using a little bit of linseed oil. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. No, the light is yellow here. This light on the hair. Uh, maybe you can just you could. You know, the hair could get some light from here, here, but not all the way up, because that's a different light source. Okay. Okay, I got this now. What about the rest? And I was thinking, you know, that make everything darker. Okay, let me think. Okay, okay. I got this light. I'm gonna I'm gonna add this light to more places here on the fabric here. Here, what is this? Here a bit. I'm gonna make this a little bit reddish, just to change, you know, the light. I'm gonna use this. Uh, chrome yellow to add more light to the face okay what else the hand the hand here a little bit of light here a little bit of light here okay now I'm gonna make everything darker okay one thing uh, I got brown umber it's a darker color I can add a layer to everything and make it darker okay now there's gonna be some d even darker areas here, for example, almost black. It's gonna be almost black, and I can add a little bit. I'm thinking like if I have this, everything is warm, really warm. I can add just a cool color around, you know, like some blue. Yeah. Okay. Let's establish the blue first. I'm gonna add some blue here. A little bit of linseed oil. Wait, I don't wanna add a lot of paint when I'm not so sure how much I'm gonna change this color. up some black more linseed oil and let's paint everything just dark I got in some raw umber Thank you. 
maybe if somebody was thinking about doing this, maybe you can have second thoughts like, why? <laughs> maybe mejor, it's gonna be better just to go back and paint and copy just the photograph. like this green I plan to add more red uh, but that's the first layer okay I just establishing some values here I got light a mid-tone look at the mid-tone I mean uh, I don't think it's working anymore I have to make it darker in here I said that I see some really dark spots but I'm thinking okay how dark I'm gonna make the background maybe I'm gonna get black here, pure black, pure black. My background still is, is transparent. It doesn't matter if, if I added pure black. Since it's transparent, it's not pretty solid. It doesn't look like really a solid, you know, black. Hmm. Okay. See, just thinking right, right now about what I see here. Okay, I'm gonna make this black, black, a bit more solid, not glincy doyer, nothing to make it transparent. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a Another brush, smaller one. Just to be more careful about putting this black here. I'm just using pure black, but at some point I'm gonna add at least some greens onto this black. Just to have a chromatic black and not just pure pure black. Okay, here. Okay, now a little bit of uh, uh, okay, on rose and coming red. Okay, for the people that's just getting here, I'm making these changes because I'm inspired about the painting that I did paint the last week. Here's the, I'm gonna share again. Here's the painting. I painted that one in my channel a week ago and I loved it. I love it completely, this painting, the contrast. Now I'm trying to get something similar because I see the light, you know, hitting the face, but obviously the contrast is not the same Okay, that's why I'm making some changes on this, on my painting. Okay. Now, that, what it takes when you, you make some changes, uh, it's just a lot of adjustments here and there. And, hey, that when we work with a lot of contrast, usually what we got is a lot of darker colors and a darker color when is they say that it's not it's not that transparent or we you add too much white you can drop with a milky color a muddy color okay yeah but let's get uh, to that later in the process right now basically my goal right now is establishing contrast okay getting the black and getting these values and getting the light I don't see yet the light like glowing the same way I want like the other painting I see obviously that because of everything is getting darker we can see the light here yeah yeah that's for sure but glowing the way I want it like the other painting I don't see it yet okay I'm going to just mix 
raw umber with coming red and I'm going to darken up here by choosing just let's say it's on it's a darker color but it's a saturated color okay coming red and raw umber no more I don't have any white raw umber is transparent pigment okay coming red is it's really powerful. What else do I need to get a transparent shadow? What else do I need? I don't think anything more. Okay. Now I see, for example, that the light is glowing a bit more. Obviously, the light that I have here on the face, it shouldn't be the same light that I see on the arm or vice versa, I have to start to control that I'm gonna knock down this light a bit, okay? just by going on top of this color and here too okay see the difference on the face? I'm gonna pick up just yellow chrome and obviously this portion of the face is the brighter area I'm gonna add pure yellow chrome. Yellow chrome, chrome yellow. Sorry if I mispronounce it. If the order is not okay, uh, chrome yellow. Okay. Now, if this is no, it's not gonna work as a highlight. This vibrant yellowish. Okay. I'm gonna see if I add a touch of white, or maybe I add. Camium yellow. I'm gonna move the eye a little bit down. Okay. I'm gonna mix this too because in this area I don't see any bright yellow getting here. Okay, step back again. Check out eh, a bit better. You start to see. I mean, for my eyes, it's, you know, everything that looks pretty dark at the beginning, now like this. Now it looks obviously. We can see it looks like a mid-tone, not dark anymore. Even here. Okay. Again, I'm gonna mix raw umber, camion red. And it's Quentin, and again, what is this? Okay, it's just a simple flat shape. I'm gonna add a little bit of a lizard crimson. More red. Have a difference between the shadow and the hair. I'm squinting and trying to see all, you know, like shadow shapes. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a different brush. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna squint in and I'm stepping back. Yep. Yeah, I like it, I like it. I'm gonna see some comments here. Hello Sharon, hello Ben, hello Chris, hello Atelier CHD, hello Mark, Air. welcome, first time that you got here, say hello Broturius, hello Sylvia, hello Just, Casual, on Facebook, hola Joaquin, Hello Marvin, hello Peter, hello Wanda. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna continue a uh, clean brush. Uh, mm, yeah, no, I need a bigger brush. 
okay, let me see. Okay, I think I'm gonna use this fan brush. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna use some raw amber with cobalt blue. Feel free, please, to ask me any question. But you see, even this uh, folding here on the fabric, I'm checking this folding with the alignment, okay, with the eye, anything that you're gonna see that is aligned horizontally or vertically, okay, you can use it. If you can use it, use it, okay. When I draw, uh, I just love to imagine that I'm using a kind of invisible grid made of horizontal and vertical and Sorry, very cool and horizontal axis all over my painting. Okay, I like the blue here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I'm gonna. I have to add more blue. Yeah, yeah. Let's more. Let's put more blue down. Blue. I was thinking that you know maybe this blue is gonna be too dark. But let's see. I'll make this just cobalt blue, pure cobalt blue. It's getting mixed obviously with the color here. And then a bit of black. Look at the size of the hand. I mean, it's too big. Obviously, that there's no detail yet, but even that there's no detail, I gotta check out the size of, of what it looks right now. You know, that's gonna be the hand. Okay. Nicola Colifson, hello. Do you have exact idea about the, uh, the beginning? What colors we looks we looks at the end? No, that's really. Uh, difficult to, to know but what I have more than having that idea what I have is basically the information let's say a knowledge that I got from different paintings okay I kind of I'm not gonna lie that kind of know about the values okay I know obviously about that but kind of kind of Let's say that I have foreseen that's gonna happen. What's gonna happen, okay? And what? Uh, okay, uh, let me put it like this color that you see right now, the blue and the orange. That's a common choice. That's pretty common. You know, that's kind of let's say a basic contrast. That's the first thing that we learned. That the thing is that that's just the fundamentals. You know, a basic complementary contrast between the say orange and blue simple as that okay the thing is that we know that I mean I knew that as soon as I, I get into the school of art I got into the school of art that's the first thing I, 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 I learned 
applying that, that's the problem. With time, you got used to kind of applying what you, what you know, the knowledge that you have, it becomes clear from painting to painting. And you kind of have an idea what's going to work. Definitely, there's going to be surprises because what one thing that is kind of difficult to control the mixtures, you know, and especially when everything is wet. Uh, I knew that by adding blue and I got the, getting this cadmium orange, which is kind of yellowish, I'm going to get some green. That's for sure. I knew that. I knew that I was painting say, okay, I got the green. I got the match of the green. I didn't want that. Okay, but knew they're going to get some, some green. Okay, the same way for, for the blue. Okay, I know the values maybe is too dark, but everything is darker now. Okay. The thing is that the first steps that uh, uh, you see you see here, you all see here, is me trying to get color and values. And like, you know, the more important thing that's going to be always values. That's why I have established light, midtones, and shadows. From there, we can just I can just put more paint on top, more and more, and adjusting color. Clean, trying if I got some muddy colors, I'm gonna try to clean those colors by just by putting more paint on top, more and more paint. If at some point somebody feels that you cannot control the amount of paint, just pick up palette knife, scrape it, or just pick up a you know paper towel, kind of erase. That's that's okay. That's pretty normal. Oh, I got another question. Mark, Aaron, do you know? Do, do you normally use small handle brushes, or are you using them because of your camera setup? Uh, yeah, using mo them more because of the size of my canvas. My canvas is pretty small. It's just like nine, nine by ten inches. Yeah, and I think that's what I need right now. Just with those smaller brushes, I think I got enough. Then the conclusion is that we are able to kind of have an idea about the, the painting, is how the painting is going to look, but not based on the, on the same painting, just based on other paintings, let's say, on the information that we got from other paintings. You know, like I said at the beginning, for people that's just getting into my channel right now, I said at the beginning that I... Uh, I'm making these changes because I want to get something closer to this paint. Okay? You see? The paint. Then you do know, oh, kind of he's repeating then, yeah. I don't need to see the painting, you know. I already know what I did that time. It's kind of difficult to keep a memory about colors and all of that. But just by repeating that so many times, you start kind of realizing, hey, hey, you know, this is going to work, this color is going to work, this contrast is going to work, this and that. Hello, Nolan. Okay. Now I got this, and I think I'm pretty close to what I want. Okay, in terms of contrast. Uh, now, for sure, one thing uh, I need to see more of this light glowing here. But first, now I gotta think about about some details, okay? To start to see the beauty of the painting, the beauty of the photograph. Yeah, because I think this color is gonna work pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna ch obviously I gotta change, I make adjustments here and there everywhere. Okay, this is okay. This is good. Look at the head. It looks like it, does, it looks like a hat. It looks like it's too big. Okay, that's a mistake on my drawing. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. I'm gonna add a few details in the face.
She has a short nose and a pointy nose. So I'm going to measure the distance from the eye to the nose. Okay. Now I see a shadow here. I'm pressing a bit harder and that way kind of moving away the, the lighter color. Okay, if because if I go light on top of a lighter color, it's going to be a mixture there, kind of, you know, replacing one color with another color. Now that you got to control, you know, the pressure that you put on your brushes, depending on what you want. think that the mouth is a triangle okay that's too dark <laughs> I clean my brush and I pick up a little bit of the paint okay now let's move to the hand okay got this here this here got this here the size of the, the hand Oh, Nikolai Kolev is asking me in regards to colors. Do you aim maximum like likelihood with the photo? Or do you aim difference at the beginning? No, no. In this case, it was just different from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I, I picked up the photograph. I saw the photograph and said, "Wow, this is beautiful to paint." But you know, uh, I saw the photograph. I saw the light on the face. And I saw the painting that I did the last week, and I was like, okay, you know, this photograph is kind of re working really good, but with a really dark, it could work really good with a really dark uh, background. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to paint this one. I love it. I'm going to make the change. And when I make a change, sometimes I pick up between changing values, obviously. If I think about changing colors, my first option, it would be about saturating the colors that I see, okay? Hey, there's no huge, a big secret. It just, it's just like imagine that you go to paint a landscape, okay? And you see a green tree, and you think, I want to make that tree my focal point. You make the tree even greener. You know, you're gonna stand up from the the other trees. That's gonna be your focal point, and that means that you're using color to create a focal point to create contrast. Okay. That's kind of an idea about. For example, I see uh, this area. Uh, there is some saturation. I see here orange here, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna add more red. The whole, uh, like the face is orangey. Yeah, I think I can just pull it off just getting some like kind of mid-tone or, or a shadow, reddish shadow. And I can maybe could work by adding some pure red. Yeah. Okay. And then you paint that, you make adjustments, because one thing is what we think, one thing is you know what we kind of forcing on and the other thing is what happens on the canvas and a lot of things that happens on the canvas is because everything is wet and there is some mixtures that we don't want 
But once we see them, we gotta just work with them and make adjustments. Okay. Hello, Gabor. Thank you. Hello, Chris. A good gift here, sunglasses. <laughs> okay. Oh, it could be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Mar Marvin is saying if you change a published photo app to make it yours, how much of this image will be considered legal? I don't know. To be honest, I think I have I have heard like twenty five percent. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Twenty five. I made a little bit of research about that, and I find some really nice information, like. I'm gonna share that information with you, you all, but I, I mean, that's not my information. What I did basically looking on YouTube for information about that. And what I, what I found is, at the end, conclusion, is just for me, for example, I could use any image that I want, but if I use it just for teaching purposes, not like, hey, I'm gonna, not selling this one, no one, just, for teaching purposes, I could pick up any photograph. Okay? I, I, that's what the conclusion. And I was like, okay, you don't know. It's just like for educational purposes. It's just like being nice with teachers. They want to pick up any photograph and everybody says, yeah, a teacher just want to teach. Yeah, let's get, let's get, get give, give them some freedom to pick up okay that's not information that I, I consulted with I found that information on YouTube about this photograph this this specific photograph I found it this on pixels pixels is a, a website that where you find really a, I mean free copyrighted photograph that means that I think it means that you can just paint it exactly the same and sell it if you want it okay mm hmm uh, who knows? I didn't. I didn't ask any uh, any lawyer or anything like that. And but I kind of uh, got the same information here and there. If somebody knows more about that, and you want to share some information, yeah, go ahead. I mean, that, by the way, that's the link to the photograph. When you see the link to the photograph, you're gonna see the link to the website, Pixels. It's just like Pixabay, kind of the same. Pixels, Pixabay. I think there are more more free websites. I see light. Yeah, this light is not that bright. At the beginning, I just added just pure cadmium orange everywhere. Now I need to start making differences. Like I'm gonna knock down this one. If I mix raw umber and cadmium orange, I got a greenish color that it works pretty nice for skin. 
Now it works with this cadmium, especially with this cadmium orange from Rembrandt. If I use the cadmium orange from Winton, it is different. Nicole said, Do you like geometry at the school? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I just used to remember and memorize just really hard. It was for me like the only way to get away with, you know, all my signatures. It was just repeating the same again. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Sometimes I didn't understand anything, but just by repetition, I ended up getting some things done. Light, yellowish light is coming out, it's getting reddish as it goes away, getting into the bluish color here. The hand is getting some of this bluish color. The pillow here, the same. Quentin, mm, I'm gonna just darken up here, maybe make the arm disappear here. Okay, I, I, we see light here, yeah? I got this blue, I'm gonna make it blue, bluish. That's gonna work. I think it would work. You know, I think the light is not getting there. Since the light, the yellowish light is not getting there, yeah, we can just use the other light or the other color, you know, that we got here that's blue. Basically, this is just blue and orange and some green, obviously, because just we got that when we mix, mix orange and raw umber or black. Bob, drink what is asking me, do you ever mix your mediums? Uh, no, I just use linseed oil when I use it, but I usually, I usually don't use anything. I did use linseed oil at the beginning because, uh, you know, it's like working on eggshells. You gotta be just careful about the values, and when the values are good, then I start just adding more paint, thicker paint, and continue making adjustments. But the beginning, basically, we're trying to get closer, you know, to all the values I want. And the same way that usually I block in my drawing, 
kind of blocking the, the, the colors the same way. So your simplification. I mean, that very varies from paint from painter to painter. I have seen some painters uh, kind of uh, let's say starting just like with really tiny smaller pieces, brush strokes. Like they are starting just kind of getting together. What I do is imagine that I start with a big piece of this puzzle. Let's say. Like the same way that I did here for the shadow, with just one color, and then I separate and start to cut it that in pieces, smaller pieces, and then starting to get this reddish, this more, this darker, reddish, you know, and darker here, and start to get it some different and some subtle variations. But the beginning is something pretty simple, you know, like just separating the, the image and thinking just about light mid-tones, shadow, reflected light and all of that. John is saying, I like the other portrait you did with high contrast. Do you prefer uh, paint high contrast images from the normal colors? Like both? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, one thing for sure that when I like something, it, it's kind of, I re keep repeating that and maybe, maybe, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, I'm gonna kind of paint the same, let's say, light conditions. I'm gonna pick up photograph with the same light conditions, the same contrast, like for the next paintings, because I like it one, and then and then I continue repeating that again and again, and then kind of stop, and then I move to a different lighting, let's say, environment where the images are lighter or, you know, mid-tone or a different contrast. It just like, maybe like just listening to music when I find a song that I like it a lot, I play that song like a thousand times until I hate it <laughs> and then I move on to a different. I'm not saying that's gonna happen with, that happens with painting but uh, let's say that not to that extreme, but it could be ca a bit. We could have a bit of a, a bit of that. I mean, not not just me. I have seen that in some of friends, some friends, some of my friends too. Like they kind of start using the same color, uh, the same combinations, and they kind of ended up having some what we call some series. You know, they share the same color contrast, and then when they are done with that, they move to a different color harmony, contrast, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. Out of glare, I don't see so clearly the contrast. I'm gonna turn off my light. Okay, that's better. That's better for me. to the face and add work on details again.
Zoom in a bit. I'm adding a little bit of white. I want this to be more opaque. What I mean by opaque is like I want this to cover more, which is different when I use I don't use white. You know, chrome yellow is is pretty close to lemon yellow. But let's say that. It's just one or let's say one or two percent less transparent than, than lemon yellow. The other question. Oh, Nikolai, would you give favor of realism over impressionism? Okay, uh, that's. I uh, no, I mean, I think. Uh, I think I could. I would love more. I love more Impressionism. Yeah. Just because of color. Yeah, I mean, realism. Uh, what happens that obviously maybe the best thing that would be something between those two, you know. But when it's just a copy of the photograph, it's beautiful, obviously. I love, I mean, that's what I do, I don't copy photograph, but... Those subtle changes that we do, maybe about color or anything, and just the idea about seeing sometimes the brush strokes and representing a realistic thing, but just with this idea about that we're making a painting, and everybody's gonna see that this is a painting. I think that's 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 pretty nice. You know, that's pretty good. I mean uh yeah. I love when I see a painting that a painter paints hair by hair, pore by pore on the skin, like that amount of details. I love to see it. I admire the amount of work. No. 
but at the same time, I gotta say that that sometimes I wanna paint like that, and sometimes I just don't feel, don't I don't see the purpose of trying to imitate a photograph to that point. You know, I wanna imitate the photograph, let's say, to the point that I still see, you know, what I want from the photograph, values, color, all of that, harmony, all of that, but. I see a painting. I see that on a painting. I don't know. I mean, that change from time to time. The way that I see things, I mean, it's kind of change depending on what I love. And what I love kind of change from time to time. Okay. And there are so many styles, so many, so many. I mean, if I gotta say, maybe an, I gotta add another style that I love is uh, surrealism. I love surrealism. I love it. I love how those painters just use ideas. And it's pretty difficult, you know, being that creative is pretty difficult. Hmm. Uh, see we saying for portraits I use pure color and sometimes I add a little walnut oil to make the brush stroke smoother. Yeah, I haven't used walnut oil but I think it's, you know, if that's some for your paint and it worked for you, it's pretty good. From some types of landscapes, for example, for the forest, I often do a first layer with acrylic colors. When it dries, I put a very thin layer of walnut oil on it and paint over with oil colors. Yeah, hey, that's perfect. That's pretty normal to paint on top of acrylic. You know, when we go to buy a canvas, usually it says oil prime or acrylic prime. Yeah. And we, if somebody just gesso here, gesso or gesso, that's like an acrylic base product. A little freedom when it's about painting. Mm. What I find really difficult is just for me is just to get to the point that being creative, adding some or elements or composition, I, I find that really hard to do. Okay, I do that a lot of times because when I paint, let's say, and when I don't paint portraits, I kind of try to paint my own compositions. I spend a lot of time just on making thumbnails. And getting some thumbnails first with, let's say, the placement of the elements of the objects or the human figures on the painting on my canvas. And then another thumbnail uh, where I think about color. Where I just, once I got all the things on my canvas that I want, then I think about color harmony and the light and if I'm going to make a change or not. Hello, story history. Can you bring your palette on the view? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was zooming in. Yeah, that's the palette. No, I don't have too much space for my palette today. Okay, okay, 
tea. I'm mixing kinecredum rolls with raw umber. more questions questions please feel free to ask me any question it doesn't matter if you think that is maybe so basic or if you think that somebody already asked that you know that's okay see the face now okay okay that's okay I'm gonna I, I think just that I need to add more lights and highlights to the face but that's good okay I'm gonna use wallet knife and pick up a bit of yellow I just want to establish this like my lighter value okay that would be my lighter value the highlight on the face. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, look at that. There is a there is a difference between the color that was there and between this highlight. Okay, I want to spread this a bit. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, hello, Nikki. Nikki Singh. I think you do good uh, creative adjustments when you have time. Oh yeah, for sure. I added the window part you suggested to my figure. <laughs> okay, that's pretty nice. That's pretty good, Nikki. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got a question here. Exploring history, say how you keep so many things in your mind to execute them. Uh, okay, uh, I got, let's say I got always the same order. Okay, I kind of follow the same steps. Sometimes maybe the steps are not easy to follow because of the process that I could get uh, sometimes kind of messy at the beginning. Okay, but may I would say that's the only difference. First, the first step is just getting the drawing that, you know, I'm not speaking something that is not common to us. I mean, I, we all know that, you know, simplification to move things from the photograph to my canvas I do the same all the time and we all do the same we have to do that all the time it's not like it's not like uh, you feel that you're evolving like you're getting better and you're gonna skip doing that uh, any, 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 anybody could try anything but I would suggest just keep doing the same okay now, after after that, I'm trying to establish values. Even if you check out my one of my paintings, like I started with just a couple of brushes and kind of messy. When I'm doing that, I'm trying to establish light and shadows. At least I need a couple of values, light and shadows. Okay, from there, and I, I you know, I think about light and shadows just like huge blocks, huge pieces of this puzzle. Okay, and then when I got that, I start just to move 
and make adjustments and add more color and more color and brush strokes more paint and depending of sometimes I wanna just add a more let's say painterly approach and sometimes I just I love blend the smooth out the paint on the surface of my canvas and I do it it's just I mean that doesn't change anything okay uh, what you have to be worried about all the time is gonna be about values first after drawing of course and then color and then with when it's about color you I, 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 I'm gonna repeat what I say usually you know, a few times imagine the color and imagine the color moving from the palette and imagine on the other side of the palette there is a gray world no color at all and the colors move closer to that to being darker grayish or lighter but grayish and they move to be pure again and you're gonna pick up from that the colors that you're gonna use to paint okay and what's the let's say one rule uh, pure colors like the full saturated colors they're gonna always kind of pop forward okay desaturated colors are going to reset okay warm colors are gonna pop forward when they are next to obviously grayish colors or cool colors and then cool colors are going to reset okay mm. oh no let me say have you ever tried to paint with your left hand oh no writing yeah but not painting <laughs> Who are your favorite masters and why? Nicola, Nicola, Nicolai is asking me that. Okay, oh, a lot. There are too many. Too many, too many. The, the one that came to my, to, my, to my mind right now is because maybe the paintings that, this painting that would be Rembrandt. Yeah. Unlucky, unlucky enough that I have seen you know Rembrandt's painting paintings on the Metropolitan Museum of New York yeah, pretty nice and amazing paintings it's just beautiful yeah. I remember when I was there, I was trying to get really close to the paintings and I got like, a, you know, the guard that was there was like, hey, stop there, you, you cannot get too close to the paintings here. And I was, okay, 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 sorry. And the minute he turned, you know, to see somebody else, I was getting closer to see something. <laughs> There's no need, you know, I don't know, but I wanted to see it like really close. I wanted to keep it in my memory as much as possible. And I got some of the paintings on video because I remember I turned I turned on my, my 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 camera, my video camera. I started just filming the paintings and then the guard came again to me and said, Hey, you cannot film here. And I was like, thank you, thank you. But I didn't understand what he said. And I just continued filming. <laughs> and then I understood what he was trying to say when I saw him, him getting mad, you know, like, hey, hey, hey. So, uh, so, oh, 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 it looks like it's, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Okay, okay, okay. I put my camera down and then he told me, no, no camera. No, no camera. Like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Don't remember exactly. Maybe it was just too young and I was just wanted to get some really nice close-ups of Rembrandt's paintings. Uh, or, or for real, I didn't realize that I couldn't. No, I think I knew. I just wanted to, just to get away with some 
nice images to keep you know for me That happened when I was in my 20s, I think. Yeah, maybe 24, 25. In my defense, I, I could say that I was just pretty young. You know, and being stupid is pretty good when you're pretty young. <laughs> Uh, oh, you, you you use your both hands, Nolan. Oh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> I got a nice comment here from Chris Harvey. <laughs> Oh, Nicola is saying, if the Guardian in New York have seen your works, it would have fair honor to allow your approach. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I spent that day, I remember, like four hours, from three to four hours on the museum. Yeah. And I didn't finish up to, to see all the paintings. It's just amazing. The museum that I didn't visit in that trip, that was the, what is called the, the museum, uh, it's, it's a Latin American museum, and the name is in Spanish, Museo del Barrio. It would be like the neighborhood Museum, something like that, or Museum of the Neighborhood. I was getting one day, you know, that, like uh, I, get, I got prepared, so I'm gonna see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna visit the museum. And then was uh, when I was there in the, in the subway, I saw a couple of guys with some paintings, you know, like six, seven paintings. And I was moving on the subway to the door to look for, you know, my, my stop. And then I heard those guys speaking about art. And obviously with the paintings, they were saying, hey, you know, we need to, to get to this place and here and there. And I was just there like, wow. And a couple of painters, you know. And those couple of guys just stop, like like uh, get get out of the train. They got out of the train and don't want to stop. And I was just I, I doubt for a second, like hey, I gotta go to the museum. You know, but from my head it was like oh, I gotta meet I gotta meet these guys. And I jump out of the train. And before they go, I say, hey man, I'm a painter too. <laughs> And both of them, they were like, they stop, they look at me, and they say, they, they just kind of, there was like a five second silence, like, you know, they thinking maybe, what the hell, why do I care if you're a painter or not? And then one of the guys, he was like, hey, hey man, how, oh, hey, yeah, we're painters too, you know, we're going to here and there, that guy that was pretty nice, you know, That's, and I ended up just spending the whole afternoon with then and we, I met like six or maybe seven more painters on that place. They were going to an art exhibition that was in New York. It was in 
uh, it was in the, in the Bronx. You know, uh, there was like something like a fair, fair, that was the, the word. And I met more painters, painters from Ecuador, from Dominican Republic, from Peru, from my country, from Mexico. That was pretty nice. And at the end, I didn't go to the Museo del Barrio. Uh, okay, I'm reading the comments just a second while I'm just. Uh, Hola, Arak Art. Oh, gracias por estar viendo el directo. Bob Drinkwater is saying, any regrets regarding painting you have mentioned before you want to travel more? Oh, yeah, I still want to, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would love to spend the life, the last days or years of my life in a different place, just for fun. <laughs> I don't know where. Yeah. I was thinking that lately more and more. You know, I was thinking like uh, because I could do this e anywhere. You know. And I could I could go like at, at this age to any country. So nobody tell me it's like, where are you coming here? You wanna work here? No, you know. And 52 kind of. Uh, I don't like to say that I'm old, but for working like any regular work, definitely. You know. That means that usually at, the, at my age I can get. Let's say relatively easy to any country, and I was thinking maybe going to Spain and live there, you know. It's just, not just Spain for Spain, it's Europe, you know, museums, art, all of that. It's just like my whole life I, I thought like, you know, like, like everybody, I think every painter here was thought like, oh, about Europe, about the, uh, the museums. Yeah, it's like the same thinking. Yeah. And obviously, uh, in USA, because in USA there's a lot of art everywhere. Mm-hmm. 
more red here. Camim Orange I, I remember I got I have a really nice friend I call him my friend but it's not my he's not my age but he was more like a, a friend because but he was a, a guy that he had some kind of relationship with my mom and he's a painter and this guy kind of spent his whole life reading about art paint and every time that I, I, that I have spent some days or visit him for some days he was just amazing all the knowledge he had acquired all over the years and he always had this dream about going to Europe and going to a museum to the Louvre, Love Louvre in France you know I don't think I have seen him for the last maybe five or ten years maybe almost ten years no no five let's say five six years I hope he's still alive, but I don't know, I mean. But the thing is that it's pretty sad when somebody has some dream. dream. I mean, you see that the life goes on. It's kind of difficult to, to get to that, you know, it's kind of difficult. That it's kind of, you, you follow a road. It's kind of so hard to move, to, like escape from that road. It's just our life. Yeah. Hmm. Italy. Oh, okay. Italy too, yeah. Okay, once I have established, you know, the values, you notice that I move, making the judgments, obviously the light here is not as bright as the light here, the same here. I can make some changes, like for example, I would love to add a highlight here, like a rim of light on the hand. Okay, I don't see that the photograph, but I like that idea. Okay, uh, definitely what I, uh, I wouldn't do is just add the same highlight that I got here, here, okay? Because that's, this is my focal point. The light, lightest light has to be here. Okay, it could be here on the box and then glow to the face. But definitely no more than that. And on the face, what I see is that the highlight here is the same highlight here, but even here we can just make differences. Making this highlight not as bright as the highlight on the nose or maybe on the cheek.
For this, that would be better just let the painting dry and paint over again because everything is wet, you know. And as soon as I, I, I blend a bit, I don't see the strand of this yellow anymore. I'm using the brush that I use for blending. Look at the hair. It's a synthetic brush. It's pretty good to get, to get this uh, effect. To step back a bit. Mm. Wow. I think it's too orangey. <laughs> Obviously, it's too orangey. Oh, not only saying what edges are important when painting in high contrast. Yeah. Okay, I, I would say the face eh, here. But the edges are kind of the same. The difference that, for example, I could have a sharp edge here. But nobody's going to notice that. I'm going to read that as a sharp edge because it's, the value is too close. Yeah, but 
we always use values to create depth. That means if you want something to reset, you soften the edges. You want something to pop forward, you sharp the edges. If everything is coming forward because you, you know somebody has painted all sharp edges around the painting, is everything is gonna kind of pop forward, call for attention, and the result is gonna it's gonna look like you cut something and you paste it on top of the canvas. Here is the illusion of, of depth. For example, here this is kind of receipt. It's darker, not too much contrast, and obviously soft edges. And you kind of move, you know, on that. Uh, for example, I could keep an accent here and I could soften the forehead a bit. Even though there is a lot of contrast there, I would soften here just to keep the light or a sharp edge on the face. Okay. Okay, I've uh, got to continue uh, thinking about contrast. I need to add black again to the background. want all the possible contrast here. Okay, I'm gonna use black with a different crimson, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Monique. Happy birthday, Monique. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, add full contrast here. Uh, let me think how much of this. Of the, the the okay okay we wait here not here yeah. everything is darker here darker I got like a couple of inches of canvas on the top. Okay, now I'm 
got that. Now I need a little bit of blue because there's gonna be some blue here, here, all the shadow. You know the the sheet. The sheet is blue here on on the on the shadow. Blue. Okay, I got another question. Nicolai is saying these muscles that pull the smile behind the eye make a slightly sharper line that separates the light from the shadow. Well, while your one is gra gradual, could you change that? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I gotta try. I'm gonna try to be pretty accurate about copying the characteristics of the face. That glue the muscles, obviously. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hello, RB. Hey, nice to meet you too. Hello, Cherry. Okay, I'm gonna use a paint brush because I don't like to see the glare on um, the background. Now, some adjustments. I got this orange here, but it's just too much. I gotta just gray down that color to a bluish color as it goes up here. The only problem with this color is just it's gonna get some greenish. Yeah, I'm gonna need to add more and more paint there until I see some grayish, bluish, than then this greenish color. Okay, I got some thalo blue. I'm gonna use thalo blue. Mm. This is from PBO. Mm. 
and I'm gonna see more blue okay I like now this because it was too orangey you know it's green now I got this bluish color which I think is much better to see some blue here okay the same for here Okay, let's look for an accent on this area here. I wanna I'm gonna add thalo blue with a touch of white. Ooh, that's too much I think. But let's see, let's see. I wanna see how much I can just push this color. Okay, I got blue, blue. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, uh, you, you see there's more light here on this pillow than this area here. Uh, for here, I'm gonna make it kind of purple. A little bit. Here, a bit lighter, just white.
Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Nicolai is saying the darker side of her cheek, especially underneath the ear, is lighter than the darker, darkest point of the nose. It's like reflection. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gotta add that. I gotta add that reflection. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna add to the roughness of the face. Yeah. Adding a, a bit of purple, the same here. Well, the medium uh, is olio. Estoy trabajando con olios. It's been two hours.
Okay, I'm thinking, you know, about darkening up more the arm and the, the hair. This is kind of black, black with kinacridon rose to create a deep, dark, you know, area here. Okay. Now this move down like this a bit, the ear. I'm gonna mix more kinacridon rose with black. This is dark, dark. Here too. You know, I got the feeling that I need to darken up more. I'm not saying that I'm gonna do it. I just saying that you no. Know, I, I get the feeling that I gotta knock down this orange. Like I'm seeing too much orange, and obviously the only way to knock it down is just darkening up. Okay. Because if I, I, I'm thinking, okay, I knock down the orange. I don't see another option like knocking down the orange and get uh, like a muddy brown. Mm. Yeah, I think what I need is this. I'm gonna do it here. Not so sure that this dark is gonna work pretty good. But let's see, you know, because shadow usually there's a kind of a rule keep shadow transparent but there's another thing that usually the shadows are the ones that are gonna just are gonna show us the lights okay that means that like, like the shadow is just working to create light okay Okay, I like it, you know, yeah, I think it's working. That's good, that's good, that's good.
I'm just darkening up the values that I see on the photograph. Okay. I darken up, I squint down my eyes, I step back. Check out if all the values I see are good. Or I need to darken up something here and there. orange anyway This video is going to stay here for anybody that wants to paint along with this session. Okay, it's not going to be easy because working with darker values is always difficult, but it's pretty good, it's always a pretty good exercise. Okay, trying to control darker values. Just like I'm gonna make all this area darker. Oh, Nikki saying, oh, Big Bob Drinkwater saying 10 of 10. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gigi. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Oh, um, Nikki saying, at one point, Rachel was thinking of doing critiques on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Nikki saying, everyone's missing your critique days on Fridays. Will you be able to return having those this winter? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that, that what Monique just said about making critiques, the critiques here. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.
Uh, we're speaking about what well, Nikki and Monique are speaking about are my Patreon account. You know, I got a Patreon account where we have paint alone. I have paint alone, paint alone lessons. We paint together, just just like here on YouTube. Uh, there is a lot of tears. You know, uh, it's just like this, but obviously, we all paint together the same picture and I critique the paintings and usually on Fridays nights I used to have some critique sessions okay and I just I, I was having you know my Friday became my let's say the busy day now as soon as I finish up this for example I gotta go to pick up my son and maybe I'm gonna end up, you know, eating out it on a restaurant or yeah, on a place, any place. It became my family day. The thing is that since everybody's missing the critiques, I was thinking too make the critiques on YouTube. I don't know if life, maybe, maybe it could be life, yeah. yeah because, you know, I, and so, I'm not that good on editing videos and all of that. It takes a lot of time. Okay. And that would be maybe life critiques. Yeah, I think that's, I think, I think it's going to be pretty nice. I'm going to pick up a day now. I'm going to add a touch of red here, pure red to the shadow here. Pure, kind of on red to the shadow on the mouth. I'm gonna make some green here, a dark green. Putting some dark green next to the red that is here, a darker red. Okay, I'm mixing some blue with a touch of white. few touches of those colors, okay? few touches. A bit of pure orange. Okay, if everything is just darker here, maybe I shouldn't see any detail of the ear. I'm gonna pick up some pure blue, thalo blue, and add some touches here. Blue and black.
Oh, what about the edge? The box has an edge, sharp edge. I didn't paint it. Oops, difficult, difficult. Oh, <clears throat> getting tired. I still need to work on the hair. I have mixed some black and blue to get this darker color here. I'm going to soften the edge a bit. Maybe I should paint something coming out from the box, like on a horror movie. You know what came to my to my mind? This movie was it was Poltergeist. What was the name of the movie? I'm pretty sure it was that. I don't know. I don't I'm not so sure about the pronunciation, but Poltergeist, 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 something like that.
Or Nikki say maybe it's, it's a magic money box full of golden glowing coins. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, Nikolai, good night, Nikolai. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Okay, I'm getting tired. I would love to spend more time here, but I think what I got is good enough. I'm gonna continue painting this one to keep it in my collection. Hit here, hit here. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's a good representation of the light. There is a reflected light here on the arm.
Pag hindi you're probably going hungry for your dinner in Lima. It is after 5 p.m., isn't it? We are kind of, yeah, at this time. Yeah. Yeah, good night, Nikki. Oh, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Bye, Sylvia. Oh, Sylvia saying bye to Nikki. <laughs> What about the arm? I think it should be a little bit thinner. Mm. You know that I, I have seen his little fingers on this side of the box. It's just like uh, too much work. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can just insinuate a bit of those fingers. Did you hear any noise? That's my mom. <laughs> I, I work here uh, and as I, you know, keeping an eye on my mom.
Okay, I think that's it for today. Oh, getting tired. Okay, I'm gonna continue painting for sure. And I mean, no, 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 no. I'm gonna continue paint, uh, working on this painting. You know, I like it. I wanna add some glazes. Yeah. And maybe uh, just paint a little bit more. Yeah, I think the space I got here is enough. Yeah, I got like one, a couple of inches of more canvas to the top, and one more inch to the left, which I think is pretty nice to have that space just to just to have more space, Some more space for the the figure to breathe. Okay, okay, that would be for today. Yeah, I will check in here and there. I think it's good enough for to for a, for a, almost a three hours session. Yeah, I like. I like my painting. I think that's what I wanted. Uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, it's pretty difficult to see was how it's gonna be the end. You know, but uh, basically, uh, my inspiration came from the the painting that I painted last week. Okay, if you compare with that, you're gonna see that there are some similarities on color and values. Uh, the only thing that I want to adjust here, that I would love to do it here, but you know, right now, I, I don't think that I could be able to to fix anything just by adding more paint. As I, I consider that's gonna waste of time on some areas. For example, that what I, I mean, I'm thinking is this area. I wanna just, I don't want the the greenish color there. Okay, I, it's just like I can just continue putting more paint, more paint, you know, but. Eventually I could fix it now, but that's going to be like just, I don't know, I, I would prefer to spend more time working on the face on any other area. It's going to be better just to let it dry. Okay, and paint on top. That's going to be easier. Okay, let me check out the last things that it has here. I'm going to work on the ear too. Okay, thank you all for being here. If you're new to my channel and you like it, don't forget please to press the like button like button or even subscribe to my channel I go live once a week usually Thursdays but I couldn't make it yesterday that's why I'm here today Okay, take care everybody, see you all next week. Oh, Arabi is asking me why you do a dark background. Uh, okay, I, I want to create more contrast. I like the photograph. But I wanted something more dramatic, like a chiaroscuro. Yeah. 
Uh, is this pretty close to what I, ha I had in mind? Yeah. Okay. The, the color that maybe I wasn't expecting on, on that I knew that I mean they're gonna get some green when you mix raw amber and yellow, black and yellow. Yeah, but that's the only color that maybe I didn't expect that much, especially here, with this green. Anyway, thank you so much. Take care, you all. Bye.